My name is Alex Sirota. Um, I run a company called New Path Consulting, a small company I started full time in uh, uh, November of last year. Uh, I'm going to be talking about um, managed WordPress, a very interesting term that you may have heard of. Um, just before I start, I just want to get an idea of who's in the audience. How many people are uh, WordPress developers? How many are designers? Uh, how many are uh, business owners? They run their own business. Very cool. How many know what the word managed WordPress means? A few. That's good. Uh, and so people that know what it means, please, uh, as I go through this, I feel free to interrupt me even. I'm, I'm going to kind of go through the content very well, very quickly. But um, uh, it's a very interesting marketing term. And uh, it means I found out as doing this presentation, it means different things for different people. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started here, and I want to start with Bloom County. Do you guys know that Berkeley Breathed is actually publishing Bloom County online now? This is an old comic that when I was growing up was really popular in the newspaper. It's political. It's got this Bill the Cat character. And uh, if you go online, uh, you can find Bloom County 2015. He started publishing it. It's not syndicated, so you can swear he does whatever he wants in it. It's really funny. But this one is, I thought was actually very interesting because he's a print guy, right? And he is... Uh, reflecting on the state of the fair. So the little girl is looking at her tat uh, tattooed mom, and she says, what's that tattoo from, mother? And she says, the funnies. Funnies? Funnies? Yeah, comic strips. This is uh, Calvin, right? Or Hobbes right there, right? So he's, does, he's doing whatever he wants in here. Strips of what? Drawings in newspapers. Newspapers? Words on images on paper. Paper? Thin tortillas made from water and grated trees. They take huge sheets of it and press old news and girdle ads onto them using black liquid similar to the stuff squids shoot from their butts. <laughs> They'd roll them all up and give them to kids on bicycles who'd ride out at dawn to throw at 200 million front doors. Next day, they'd cut down another forest and do it again. Look at these kids, right? Mother. Something fried your noodle, the funnies. <laughs> Things are changing, aren't they? Things are changing dramatically. So why care about hosting? Hosting is really boring. I mean, it is such a boring thing. Right? It's, WordPress is so much more interesting than hosting. In 2015, we have an unprecedented amount of hosting options for basically making sure your WordPress site continues to run. Hosting is you know, the disk space, the memory, and the connection to the internet so that your website doesn't have to run on your little computer in your back door, in your back room. I, I got into the internet in 1989. I had an email address at the University of Michigan when I was an undergraduate there in Ann Arbor in 1989. I, got, I saw the first web browser with my friend Carl DeCordova when I worked for Apple in Austin, Texas in 1994. So I've actually seen what's happened in the internet. And in the last five years with this Word, WordPress community, I'm seeing something that I've never, ever seen before, which is non-technical, people from the print world, just people that really are not what you would call typical computer science people, getting in and doing things that is, is just incredible. And um, so uh, hosting has actually become kind of interesting especially with this WordPress thing. It's become really quite interesting. Um, I think it's important to be informed because things are changing quite dramatically. And I'll, I'll go through the presentations and describe how. I believe that hosting, a good hosting partner is critical for your sanity and for your customer's success. These days, two to four seconds per page load is pretty much the norm for performance. Anything more than that, five, six, seven seconds per page, people start, le start leaving your site. They think your site is broken. They expect the performance of your website just like a Google search. Search something, they click, it should load. If it's anything more than that, it's not acceptable. And uh, most of the sites that you have, if you go and test them, you'll see that they don't load that quickly. So again, hosting is an important partnership. On top of all that, I believe that these kind of solutions like Manage WordPress, which I'll describe in a second, they can make the configuration and development safer and even fun and, and friendly, depending on which host you work with. So have you ever seen this on, your, on a WordPress site? So that, that's a 
404 error not found from this company just host. It's just any old company. I found this online. And then here's the rest of the website. Have you ever seen that on a WordPress site? Has anybody ever seen this bug? This is a malware infection. This has happened to one of my customers. Not, this is not the screenshot, but this, is, this happens. Malware gets injected into your WordPress site, tries to load in a frame another website above your site that generates some sort of activity on a site somewhere else in the world that generates a 404 error and is now part of every single page of your site. This is a hack. This is one of many, many kinds of hacks that are being attempted as we speak every second to every WordPress site on the planet. Your site is being attempted to be hacked this way. The question is whether it's successful or not. So this is a story of one of my customers in December of 2013 and around Christmas. Shared hosting at a large Canadian host, uh, which will remain nameless, a large one. You might have a domain name there. WordPress install with a default admin username. Naughty, right? Core not upgraded in months. It was like, I think, version 3.6, something like that. This is uh, November 2013. I'm sorry, uh, December 2013. Solution was, and, that, and they got that 404 problem, the same one. Restore from recent backup, security baked into hosting. That's the solution. When we called this host, they had took them a week to get a backup restored. And I wasn't about to go and, and try to figure out what that malware problem was. It's just a waste of time to try to restore functions PHP or some other, some other file to make it work. So you need, a, you need a proper backup all the time. And you'd be able to click and restore it. It's got to be baked in. Story number two, migration does not equal good times. Has anybody ever had to migrate a site, let's say from, I don't know, um, Drupal or Joomla to WordPress? How many people have done that? Wow, only three people have migrated a site from another. Anybody share their experience about what that looked like? How long it took? A lot of careful reading before we did it. A lot of careful reading before we did it. Anybody else? How long did it take to do it? In, in, in person hours? Half a day. Half a day? Four or five hours? <laughs> it took me a week to take something from Typepad to WordPress. Typepad to WordPress, I've done that a week. I concur with that. It does take a week. Because all you're going to get is actually your text. You don't even get the images. <clears throat> so when we had this hacked site, I was like, we're not, we're not keeping it at this host. They're getting attacked. Plus, they don't do anything to help you maintain your site. And you've done nothing either, talking to my customer. Right? You haven't secured it. And you don't have your host help, helping you either because they don't really care. They're in a shared host. So they want to demand. So I'm looking for a host that does one-click migration. Put some information. Suck the data from the source site. Put it into target site. Done. Minutes. Not hours, not days, not weeks. Minutes. There's also an interesting sort of uh, um, benefit you get. If you get a new customer and they want to move to WordPress, or even from another WordPress website, you have this value add of saying, I can do that for you in a few minutes. Ready to go. This is you know, database, media scripts, lots of stuff to move, right? Those, those movers aren't usually that happy looking. <laughs> have you ever seen the white screen of death? Holy shit, when I saw this for the first time, I was like, what the hell is this? I, 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 saw, I saw this, this is not my site, but I saw it, I right clicked, there was nothing in the return file. I believe there was an HTML open and close tag if I'm right, but there's nothing else. It's completely empty. No error diagnosis, nothing. Has anybody ever seen this screen? Be honest. Several people have seen it, because at some point in your life, you've seen this screen. And I asked somebody at lunch yesterday, said, have you ever seen the white screen of death? And I saw the blue screen of death on your computer. It's like, yeah, but you can just restart and start again, and everything will be OK, right? Your files will be there, usually. Not with this. Everybody on the internet sees this. If your site is, is messed up like this, everyone sees the white screen of death. Fix this. It's not always that easy. Depends on what happened, right? You upgraded some theme, a plug-in, boom. You, did, you made an extra. You, you left a trailing space before the closing PHP tag in functions PHP. 
perfect screen of death? Maybe. Solution, use a workflow, a tried and true tested way of testing changes, promoting them to a staging or dev environment, and then promoting them for production, and roll back production if required. Now, this is how developers do things. WordPress is not as simple as we might think. So now I'm going to talk about the differences between hosting, and hopefully, some of you may already know the differences, but I have a different way to kind of think about it, because I, I work with a lot of small businesses, and I try to explain things uh, in layman's terms. Because I, if I say VPS, shared hosting, uh, managed, w, uh, managed WordPress hosting, people get confused. I'm trying to make it so that people can understand what they're buying, right? It's really important. So a bare metal VPS, so bare metal is like a server that you buy and you put it in a hosting facility or a virtual private server, is what I call build your own car, right? You get like some space, you actually get some physical server or you get essentially a virtual server which has unlimited control, it has memory, it has storage, but you do everything on it. It might come with a pre-installed image, but you're doing everything. It's not terribly expensive, especially the VPS now. There's a lot of competition, but you, are, you have to know how to fortify and how to do everything, install all the backup plugins, and you have to do that for every single new customer that you get. If you're a super rock star ninja, if you're in the business of setting up these sites, a VPS is a very effective solution. I don't think, personally, it's a solution for 90% of you, number one. But it's not too expensive because, and you get like this amazing server. You have root access. You can do anything you want. Shared hosting is public transit, like our TTC. Our TTC is better than shared hosting, I think. It's like $1 sign. It's cheap, 99 cents per month. You get this little apartment space, and you get the hardware, kind of, you don't really get the hardware, you get a shared directory. And you have the operating system that underlines, supports that to be able to install WordPress. Most of you have installed WordPress at one point in time outside of your computer on a shared host. GoDaddy, one in one, there are thousands of these companies, right? Tens of thousands. They live in every single city in, 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 in the world. They have companies. You can run a shared host with a server and put 10,000 customers on it. Finally, we get to managed WordPress hosting. This is what you get on managed WordPress hosting. You get hardware, an operating system, and the three most important things that are, in, that are specific to every company, that are unique to every company, as we'll go into a second, that allows your website to scale with size in terms of how many visits it gets, so in some cases, millions of visits a month, and without touching anything, because it has the infrastructure to do so, and you get security baked in. In many cases, you don't have to install tremendous amount of security features. You may want to install some plugins, but there's a lot of that is baked in. And you get automatic backups. And some, some of the hosts do backups before core upgrade, after core upgrade. They do it on a nightly basis, one click restore, click a button, whatever happened yesterday gets put back in, into a state. You get hacked, your customer doesn't even know it happened. So I personally had to use this. It was amazing. When I first time I used it, I didn't have any backups. I didn't have any backup plugins installed. People will argue about backup buddy and all this stuff. I don't trust that stuff. I trust my host to do the job that I don't want to do. I call this Uber for hosting. That's a strong statement. I know. We'll talk. That's a, that's that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. That's exactly what I want to that's what I want to discuss in the QA. Let's talk about that. Right? This idea of plugins and your kind of ownership versus delegating to your host, because that's actually what's happening here. I want to make sure it's very clear to everyone. You are delegating probably 15 to 20 plugins here to your host. You're basically saying, I do not want to figure out scaling, varnish, blah, 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 gobbledygook. I don't want a word fence, the da, 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 da security. Although I might want to get notified when somebody's trying to hack my site. And I'm not doing backups because I want you to do backups. I want to make sure that my backups actually work. And I want to not have to have expertise and storage or any of that to figure that out. This is what Manage WordPress is a new kind of company. This is a, you'll see a little bit later, there are 20 plus managed WordPress providers in the world now, which blew my mind. I did this survey in February of all of them. 
and it's $2 signs to $4 signs. It could be pretty inexpensive. It could be very expensive. It's very interesting. So here are the three different options in some companies. You'll know some of these. There's a lot more in the shared. There's thousands more. In the virtual private space, it's a cool company, Linode. Right? You can sign up and get a Linux host that's pretty neat. I think they're in Austin. Hundreds of these. And manage WordPress. One third or more of the WordPress hosts that are managed are actually shared host companies that have actually created solutions in the managed WordPress space. And in one case, I'll describe, they actually, uh, you can upgrade a shared host to a managed WordPress. It's just a marketing term, though, I think. And we're going to take a look at five of them. They're all quite different from each other, and they're meant for a different kind of customer. So let's talk a little bit more about managed WordPress. The first thing is the cost and support is drastically different than a managed WordPress host. They are aimed at different customers. Managed WordPress companies, you can't paint them with one brush. You can't just say, all of managed WordPress are for people that don't want to install plugins for backup. That's not what it is. It's just a marketing term that I think some of the early companies in the space came up with to kind of say, it's, we're going to do some of the work for you, some of the really important, difficult work. But they're aimed at small, medium businesses like me. They're aimed at agencies. They're aimed at development shops. I, in theory, they're aimed at small businesses that just you know, do development for, for customers. They're rarely aimed, I think, directly at hobbyists because of the price point. The support in managed WordPress varies from very light configuration to, in some cases, development. They will actually do development for you to fix or actually extend your functionality. That's, that's what I found in my research. It's quite, a, it's quite a shifting landscape of what it does. It's an extremely competitive market, but you get what you pay for. You can go from tens of dollars per month to hundreds of dollars per month per site in managed WordPress. So it's quite diverse. So that's cost and support, roughly kind of what it looks like. It's, it's different than traditional host. Architecture is the biggest change. This is by far the difference between VPS and um, shared hosting. In architecture, levels of caching and optimization that's built in, baked into the system is outside of WordPress. It's not in WordPress. You don't they don't, most of the managed WordPress do not allow you to install uh, W3 total cache or any of those caching systems. They are, Contra they, I believe that managed WordPress companies feel that those caching technologies should not be in WordPress. They should be underneath WordPress. I agree with them. Because WordPress is for, for, for publishing content. WordPress is not for caching and optimization. Those solutions that were caching were to address shared hosts that were not performing as good as they need to be. They were Band-Aids. I'll say that right now. They're not the right way to go. You can do as much as you can in a shared host to squeeze out as much as possible, but you're in an apartment building and there's 10,000 neighbors. Okay? You want to get performance? You go to manage WordPress. Workflow. This is that thing I was talking about. It's a lot more than that about staging and development. Some companies allow you to have a dev staging and production server. They support Git. They support all sorts of source control. They have all sorts of interesting, cool features. Uh, but in the end, they're made so you can develop properly and not screw up your site in production and iteratively create value to your customers without screwing stuff up. Finally, security. Most of the managed WordPress hosts know that WordPress is attacked on a second-by-second -second basis from nefarious people and systems all over the world. When I installed WordPress for the first time and I saw what was actually happening to my admin interface, I almost, I almost fainted. Attacks from Ukraine, from Russia, from India, from China, from the United States, from Canada. All the time, trying to log into admin, variants of your usernames, variants of your domain name, variants of anything you can imagine, trying to see is there a username or password that I can compromise. The attack surface on WordPress, because it's an open source project at the application level, is bigger probably than I think almost any open source project on the planet. And what I mean by that is there are so many places to go into WordPress, themes, plugins, core, and it changes all the time that when you guys, when we, I was complaining, like, why is WordPress core updated all the time? Because the tax service is so big. There's a question here? You're talking about uh, .org, right? Yes. .com is essentially probably the world's biggest managed WordPress host. 
but they don't allow you to install any plugins. These guys don't allow you to install plugins. Most of the plugins you can install and manage WordPress. This is all applied to installing WordPress by yourself. In fact, well, the last piece is a great custom UI makes complex processes user friendly. There's no cPanel. Th these companies build custom code in order to manage WordPress. So there is no five minute install. There's a two second install. Click a button, new WordPress site is done. Database is created. Uh, tables have prefixes properly. None of the stuff you have to worry about is managed. These are experts that are lending and, and baked into the technology stuff to make it easier for you to do your job, which is design a wonderful experience for customers. You, if you're a designer and a programmer or a small business owner, should not be worried about the prefix on the WP tables. Full stop. That's not something you need to worry about. You shouldn't have to worry about it. Let the host take care of that. That's what Managed WordPress does. The, and you want to create a staging site? One press button. This, it does, happens in the background. Lots of stuff happens in the background. And the bells and whistles. Well, there's migration support. There's free migration to this company, Fantastic, $99 migration. They'll do the migration. Migra they'll migrate for you. I'll show a couple of screenshots of companies that do some interesting work. And they have prepackaged and proprietary plugins and themes. A company called Web Synthesis provides Genesis for free with their package. And there's a five minute quick start website on GoDaddy Pro, manage WordPress. So basically, before I get into the review of five, five sites, you don't do any of this stuff. This is not something you need to do. This is not something you should do. Unless you're a developer, you need to do this, maybe. But even most developers shouldn't do this. This is, you know, the config database stuff, five steps to cr create cloning, a mic or doing a why there's like, Tell 10 steps at the end of this. There's 10 steps here. So the fantastic five. Five very different approaches. Here's what's interesting what happened. I started, so I, I had 20 different hosts. I have a Google Doc that I linked to th from this presentation. And I selected five. And four of them ended up being uh, supporters of this conference, completely by accident. It was, I swear to you, I, my, my hand in a Bible, I didn't even know that was going to happen. But what happened is I shared this presentation on the Facebook group called WP Hosting, WordPress Hosting. There's about 3,000 members, a really cool Facebook group. And a couple of people from the different companies, Pantheon and uh, DreamHost and GoDaddy and a few other companies, they said, hey, we'll give you some feedback. So some of this stuff is actually directly from the vendors, and some of it I added myself, just for, for disclosure. GoDaddy managed WordPress. I'm going to start with essentially what are I think are the the, the, and I'll tell you exactly who I think these companies are for. So GoDaddy Managed WordPress is cheap and cheerful. So it's super user friendly, including automation migration from most WordPress installations, which means that there is, I'll show you a screenshot, you can basically point to an existing WordPress install anywhere on the internet. You provide your FTP credentials and your Word, uh, WP admin, and they will suck the whole site over to them. It takes about 30 minutes. I tried it, it's pretty cool. It's a free membership, GoDaddy Pro is a free membership program. It provides freelancers exclusive tools and support. They're here, you can talk to them. They have a staging to production deployment for a complex, uh, but for a complex site it can be finicky. I have a very complicated 20 plus plugin site. The staging to production doesn't work as well as I'd like it to, but I know they're working on it. But I have used it, the idea of basically making changes in one site, click a button, it gets promoted to production. You can promote your content, or you can promote just your changes, your code changes, plugins. So what I do, for example, is I can have a site in staging, do a plugin updates, WordPress core plugins. It's a completely copy of the production site, content and all. And I can see if everything works. And when I'm ready, I can promote the production. They have that feature. Or you can do it, you can just do it in staging, don't promote it, and then do the, and do the changes on your production site manually if you want. Depends on what you want. You can do both. But they, you have essentially one WordPress install, but it has two copies that you can work on. They're a sponsor. Right. I just added that because I found that out. Here's a couple of screenshots. This is a migrate, this is the migrate screen. They give you a temporary domain. You put the original current site URL, www.mysite.com, and the admin username and the password. Right? And then you also give the FTP credentials for your original site. You press a button, 30 minutes later, you got a copy of your WordPress in there, manage WordPress. Pretty cool, right? Didn't do anything. Here's, this, here's the settings uh, control panel. This is actually the whole thing. This is the whole managed WordPress. You can add a domain, map the domains. Here are all your backups, restores, all your DNS setting, all your SSH, SFTP settings, 
uh, all your database credential information. This is how you set up your staging sites, how you remove the whole site. That's the whole control panel. That's all there is. This is GoDaddy Pro. This is not necessarily part of managed WordPress, but this is one of the features that's really cool. People pay 30 bucks a month for this feature. It's a simple feature. Put up as much as 10 do domain names on your account. It'll automatically check your page speed, your uptime, and your response time, and uh, send you SMS and emails alerts when there's downtimes or uptimes. It's a site monitoring tool. It works better than most of the commercial products out there. It's a free part of GoDaddy Pro. Number two, DreamPress 2 from DreamHost. Speed and flexibility are us. Okay? This is an interesting, this, I talked to this company. I'm not sure exactly where they are, but um, they're in, I know in the States. So this is a new product called DreamPress. Now it's version 2. This is a shared host. What they saw as I talked to them, they said, we had a lot of customers ask us for basically taking care of these complex features that we created a migration tool from existing DreamHost customers to upgrade and downgrade to this managed WordPress solution. It's extra cost, but they've invested in time. They saw a demand in the market for you know, a really interesting dream, uh, a WordPress solution. You, they do something very interesting for what they call DreamPress. You get two virtual private service for every WordPress site, one for your WordPress installation and one for your MySQL installation. It's pretty cool. They use Varnish and they even have HHVM, Hip Hop Virtual Machine, to speed up your site. They're actually quite, as for a shared host, they're investing a lot of time in figuring out what's going on. There's no secret sauce, meaning they publish all their rules. This is all the caching and optimization stuff you'd normally have to install yourself. They just give it for you, right? And, and you can modify it too. They, some, some companies don't let you do that. They do. It's kind of interesting. Um, they regularly contact plugin authors that don't play nice. This is an interesting problem, right? You have plugins that basically can potentially uh, conflict with each other and also cause problems in managed WordPress. So the, the, their customers say, you know what, this, this is not working. So they'll actually go out there and, you can, and they'll tell, you know, if you guys want it to be compatible with DreamPress, you're going to have to make some of these changes. It's kind of cool. And they have a wiki. And there's a link to their wiki where they describe all the technical details. They share a lot about how their managed WordPress hosts work. It's actually not very usual. Not everybody does this. They have an upgrade, and I believe that there's a, I believe there's a sponsor. Maybe, maybe that's not correct, actually. So this is actually off their website. They love DreamHost. Obviously, of course they do. It's on their website. Um, but I think it's, and in the WordPress hosting group, it's, it's pretty consistent. People do really like this company. Um, this is an interesting, when you sign up for a DreamPress account, they have this domain name picker which is, I've never seen before. It's very user friendly. And it gives you all the, t all the general LTDs. I don't know, I just noticed this one. Dot rich is 2350 per year. Holy moly. For a domain name? You know? WordCamp dot rich, 2350 per year. Anyway, it's a cool picker and they allow you to very quickly select a domain. Or, uh, oh, here's dot republican, 34.99 per year. <laughs> I, just, I just saw that, right? Pretty cool, huh? <coughs> Anyway, so it's, it's kind of nice how they did that. Number three, Flywheel, agency friendly and team oriented. This is a very interesting company. Um, they're actually specifically designed for agencies, design agencies. <clears throat> so they have simple collaboration tools for agencies and customers. And what I mean is you have a team of people working on the site together, and so they have access control for multiple people and their customers. And there's some more details here. And they have a one-click staging environment, so you can actually create a staging. It's, this is a pretty cool company for, for companies, uh, for, for agencies. And here's a couple of screenshots. Their screenshots, their, their user interface is extremely, like, like, it's elegant and very clean, but it doesn't take a great screenshot, unfortunately. But what I'm showing here is uh, their dashboard for add-ons. You can add SSL support with one click. It's pretty cool, right? If anybody's ever added security support with certificates, it's pretty neat. You can just, boom, click it. You can add a CDN. So uh, content delivery network with one click. Yeah. You guys are laughing. Why? It, well, SSL, adding SSL with one click doesn't update your WordPress installation. This it does here. It's going to update all my templates. This is about turnkey, guys and girls. This isn't about tweaking configuration files. This is about your customer saying, I want SSL tomorrow, and it being there tomorrow. And you charge for that privilege. This is about you paying them, Flywheel or any of these companies, to make your life easier so you can charge more money. That's what this is about. Multi-site network, you want to add a multi-site, you click a button, you add a multi-site. Okay. This is about serious WordPress commercial implementations. This is not about playing around. I should just note that with Firewheel, if you do enable multi-site, you don't get 
You don't get staging, because they don't support the staging from it. Great point. I didn't know that. Um, but this is, this is, all of these systems are designed like you have a button, and it's like a little toggle, and there might be like a million things that happen behind the scenes. The, the people that created these products, there's some, some of them in a the crowd here actually today, um, they know how hard it is to do this stuff. They want to make it turnkey. Simplicity for complex processes. This is your migra migration for free. Begin migration, I didn't get too much about how it works, but, but sim some, similar to other migration tools. Here is their collaboration system. So you have these people, username and passwords, you have an owner, and you can delegate control to multiple people to do things to manage the site. Not, this is not uh, WordPress users. This is administrators of actually maintaining so you can delegate who owns what on a WordPress installation. Right? All your backups, your billing, here's your staging, it's all inside here. This is how you can create a clone. This is a very cool idea. You can actually take a website and duplicate it with one click. And you can start paying it for yourself, your company pay for it, or for your customers. So that's how you can create like a template site with content or no content and everything's set up and you click a button and you make another one. Right? Pretty cool. They have, I don't know why they did this, but they have their own database uh, UI for managing the WordPress database. So you don't use like the database tools that come with MySQL, you use their user interface and you can do some cool stuff here. It's pretty cool. I guess agencies may need to do this to fix some stuff in the database. WP Engine. We have them in the crowd. Raise your hands, guys. Thanks for coming and girls. Awesome. So I lived in Austin, Texas for a while in the 90s, and I love, I love companies, the tech companies in Austin. I'm not a customer. I might be, I don't know, eventually. But uh, they are five plus year WordPress pioneer and performance champion. This is how I think, I think of them. They are, when I heard about this term, managed WordPress last year, when I was freaking out with my customer, this is the company that came up first. Um, I, I also want to know why, what your logo is. It's a very interesting logo, but that's afterwards. Um, WP Engine. They have worked on doing this kind of work for five years now. They're probably the, the most advanced in terms of actually physical time, you know, chronological time being it. They co-invented, I believe, the term managed WordPress. And I talked to them at the, at the show a little bit. I don't think it's a great term, but that's what it is right now. Um, they have a labs team. They pay people right, to research WordPress, the state of the art. I don't know how many companies do this. Right. Uh, for, for example, HHVM, this is Hip Hop Virtual Machine created by Facebook to improve PHP. Uh, GOIP and this fellow, Stephen Word, actually contributes to Core, but he gets paid by WP Engine and he does WordPress contributions. I don't know how many people get that. Most people do it for free, right? It's open source, but not WP Engine. They received $23 million in venture capital in, in uh, March of this year. They have eight to 12 people speak at WordCamps. They spoke here, I just saw it. It was the hour before this presentation. And they are a sponsor. Pretty cool, pretty cool system. Here are a couple of user interface. They do what I think is, is critical, and I asked all the vendors to do this. They do an automatic upgrade before WordPress core from 4.25 to 4.31 and after. Automatic timestamped update. Obviously, you know why you'd want to do this, right? You update core, everything breaks, you want to roll back. They do it automatically. They have daily checkpoints. You can do, a, you can do an on-demand backup. That's pretty cool, actually. This is all the things that you get from a backup plugin, in theory. But you're not responsible. You have a vendor responsible for it. Right? You're paying for that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do here. It's really quite, quite awesome. Here is how you do it, uh, a duplication of an install. This is a clone, I believe. So you can create a, a duplicate or a template of a clone, and you can create the install. And I don't even know what this is, but it looks cool. It looks so cool. Yeah? yeah? Transfer. I have no idea what that is, but we'll talk about it later. Um, Pantheon. I want to get through this. I have like 10 minutes left. Pantheon. Pantheon. San Francisco company. DevOps for hire. Does anybody know what DevOps means? Development operations? DevOps is a really interesting thing. Companies that are like tech companies, like Facebook, Amazon, all these huge companies have special teams called DevOps. And what they're for is to, it's called development operations. They're for taking changes, cool new features that you see, and making sure they don't break the damn thing. 
right? They're, they're, it's a very interesting, and they also talk to customers to some extent to see what kind of features are there, but they work with a marketing team. So it's, it's different in every place. It's a, it's a kind of a new term, but they, these guys, what I term them as DevOps for hire, meaning you basically can hire this company and they are become your, kind of your DevOps team in some way. Um, it's just, it's, it's meant, Hamtan is meant for, I think, companies that can't afford a DevOps team with a full dev staging production workflow. They have incredible amount of functionality to create forks of installs. So what I mean by that is you can have like, you can be developing something for a customer and you want to make a fork and try something else, but then you want to merge those changes together. They have an enormous amount of functionality with Git. Um, they also invested a lot of time and they have some pretty brainy people that actually um, think about this idea called container technology, like Google App Engine and Heroku. And they also do Drupal, so you can actually host either WordPress or Drupal using this managed WordPress approach. They, they claim, and uh, this may be true, that their largest customer, they host huge websites, but the SLA, the performance profile for their largest customer is exactly how their smallest customer. That is to say, whatever their smallest customer can do in terms of scale, go to a million visits a month, it's available for you on demand without any extra cost. So that's pretty cool. You also can sign up for a free developer site. This is one of the only companies that I've seen that allows you to do a free developer site, use all their functionality for free without paying one cent, and only pay when you deploy. It's pretty cool. They're also a sponsor. They were here. Dwayne was here. This is their little cool uh, screenshot. What can go wrong? Uh, everything can go wrong. So we know this, $5 per month, na noisy neighbors. VPS is, I don't know what I'm doing with Unix and Linux. And I, I need help. You pay 25 bucks a month, you gotta do everything yourself. But they claim that there's a major gap between that and what's called clustering, right? And clustering is $2,000 a month, and this is how you create performance, you know, you know, really high performance website. But then the question is, I did something in one, but it worked in dev and I can't deploy it. So they're solving, in some ways, they're solving this gap here between VPS and cluster. Right? And there's a cool presentation in here called Workflows of Dance that where I got this, and, they, and Josh Koning from Bantheon describes this. So this is the idea of what they call multi-dev. Developer sandbox, you create a new feature, you have a QA sandbox, you put it into this workflow, there's a dev site, there's a test site, there's a live site, and you can stop doing these things. It worked on my machine, but it's not working in production. You're, ra you're wrangling local development tools and choosing all kinds of weird stuff for free and open source stuff that may or may not work. You're praying for scale. You're reconciling out of sync development databases. You're delaying sign off with your customer. This is really meant for pretty large deployments that are pretty complex. So it may not be applicable to most of you, but they exist. So five different products with five different, very different audiences. And this is why I mean that managed WordPress, well, it's just a marketing term. It really means very different things for everyone. You can go from a, you know, very, very simple idea of the staging, the backup, to something like Pantheon and everything in between. And the order of the companies that I described is my view of how more advanced it can get. It's, just, it's a very wide space. What is interesting, though, and I think it's a credit to the WordPress community all over the world, the fact that there are 20 commercial companies in the business of hosting only WordPress websites speaks a lot to the, to the power of this community. They're actually making a profit and hiring people on the basis of WordPress. And this started happening about five years ago. And it's not gonna stop. So what's, what, this, what this link is, if you click on here, you get a Google Doc, and it'll show 20 of the other, there's show another 15 companies that do this. They're in Europe, they're in, there's, I think there's a company in India, there's all kinds of companies that are like racing to create managed WordPress solutions. Something I did in February 2015, and uh, this is a cool, if you're interested more about hosting, this is a great group, this is the URL. And I have five minutes left, that's good. I'll recap a little bit here. I think hosting is a huge factor for developer sanity and customer satisfaction. I don't think you should really underestimate what your host can do for you. And this is like talking a little bit about this idea of, um, what I'm good at and what I should delegate to somebody else. In general, the, it's a really good business tactic to just do what you're good at and delegate what you're not to someone else. Even though from a, you know, a money and an ego perspective, you feel like, well, I should be able to do this. It's not that complicated. That's true. You know, realistically, you can 
create optimization and caching and plugins and for backup and all that kind of stuff. The question is, is that really where you want to spend your time? Also, if something goes wrong, you can only blame yourself, right? And that usually manifests itself in a customer satisfaction from your customers. They, don't, they see that you may not be as professional as you can. So I, I believe that every company should have a really good hosting partner. And it should be one that has a face. And what I mean by that is you should be able to talk to them and get really good advice about how you should do things. Much like you could do for free at WordCamp. You can pay a nominal amount. And in the case of some of these, all these companies I described, they're going to go you know, pretty much the, the, the length that it takes to keep you happy. This is a link to an article which is probably like the only thing that's out there that does performance testing against all shared hosts that run WordPress. There might be several hundred. And they run this like really thorough test of performance and uptime. And they do like this, I don't know, it's like, remember how PCs used to be evaluated like in PC Magazine? They do this for, for hosts. And they just updated their benchmarks and it's called Review Signal. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool article, a lot of detail. Things can go wrong. You need a great partner. These are five that I, that I thought. I'd love to hear your questions. And uh, you guys have any feedback or any experience? Be a WordPress superhero. Um, I'm an old school developer. I've been building a long time, so I'm familiar with the dev staging environments. Okay. Once you get a WordPress site up, though, what I'm finding, if I understand these sites correctly and their staging process, you have to, like, let's say I've got my site up that's running. All I have to do is um, I added a new picture on the about page for the person that got a new picture to. All I want to do is upload on the prepared vector site the one image. Okay, I don't need to update anything else. Right. Is it true I still have to stage and update the whole site? It actually is it's very host specific. Like, in, for example, in GoDaddy, you can say, in, the, in their managed WordPress, you can say, uh, promote only the code and database, don't touch the content. Or you can say both. But usually when you've uploaded a picture, actually not usually, always, there's something that's happened in the database, right? This picture has been uploaded to the file structure, and, right? And, and thumbnails have been made, and there's a record of that in the WordPress database. The reality is that everything that you do, every click you do in WordPress dashboard, affects the database in some way, right? I mean, is there anything, I mean, other than maybe clicking on the home icon or something, I mean, most of the things you post, you're making a change of some sort. Installing a plugin obviously does, right? So the fact is, WordPress, it's sold, and like we think of it as this user-friendly tool, but from a development, I'm a developer, it is a very complicated code base. Don't make no mistake about it. There's a lot of stuff going on. And with the, and the REST API, there's going to be even more. And when you add 20 plugins, like there's a lot of moving parts there. So all these companies are trying to make that easier. They are published on my website at 12 o'clock automatically. And, slide, and they're on SlideShare. They're on, they'll be on SlideShare. They'll be on the WordCamp site as well. But I, I urge you to visit that side-by-side -side thing, because there's a lot more other stuff, pricing and stuff like that. There's a question. I wanted to hear about your backup experience, actually, the backup buddy stuff. And some, you, you had a thing about backups and uh, stuff. No, my experience is, is developing on a client site using GoDaddy WordPress managed hosting, which I found to be convenient for initially um, setting up this, the site in the first instance. Yeah. And after that, it just became a <coughs> pain in the ass. Is that right? Um, because there's no coordination, there's no... Uh, it's not like a staging environment that I'm familiar with. So once you've launched your site, that managed that part of the managed service it doesn't add any value. And the forced caching, the forced plugins that they force you to use get in the way of belt. You can't turn off the caching, so True. any tweak that you make, um, you've got to upload or push and then you've got to clear the cache and then refresh the screen. Tom makes a very, a very, so for, very fair point. Manage WordPress hosting can be a real pain in the ass. No, I they're, think... They're, I, they're specifically I, to answer your question about the backup thing, yeah. um, oh. that I found to be rather useful. Okay. Um, I was a little bit nervous about trusting it. Yeah. I was very nervous. 
That, that's actually a very... That's only because, I, and the way I removed that was because I had belt and suspenders. I had their backup thing. I had my backup thing, right. which is loading it off-site, which to their credit, they allow. Right. Um, because it's an automated process. Yeah. Um, they do support things like using um, Duplicator. Yeah. Um, and... Um, like using the plugins, other yeah. Other tools like that. They had yeah. very few restrictions on plugins. That's right, that's true. The ones they had seemed to be very... Reason, reasonable. Reasonable. All, all of these, all these managed WordPress hosts have a list of one or more plugins they do not allow you to install. They will forcibly uninstall it if you try. Or sometimes they don't even let you install and it. And I found that their forced plugin use causes WordPress to behave in unexpected fashions. I had to go and um, actually undo things that work in a standard uh, WordPress environment and break them so that they worked on the GoDaddy hosted site. It works. Yep. It's not earth shattering. It's not going to, you know, big crevice open up and the whole site's yep. going to disappear. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But it, for people that are used to a particular workflow that working with some functions of WordPress, yeah. it just wasn't very comfortable. No, I, have con I concur actually there. They, they re and I think from this perspective, there are some companies that have been doing nothing but WordPress managed hosting for five plus years. There are other companies like shared hosts that, that, um, just got into this a year ago, two years ago maybe. And so, and also remember, they're also for different audiences. So you different, and so there's different pluses or minuses. Really, you I do have to. Choose them for that to find it. That's yeah, yeah. Option, so yeah. 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 There's there's a lot of options.